Hello students, welcome back. I am Professor Preeti Shibuti brought you another session from basic electrical and electronics engineering. We are discussing about the concept of a DC machine and in today's session I am going to derive an equation of a EMF generated by a DC generator and we are going to discuss about an equivalent circuit. Now what is an EMF equation? See, if I say it is a DC generator, it is nothing but it is going to generate an electricity. Means what it is going to generate? It is going to generate an EMF or voltage. But here comes the question. How much amount of EMF or how much amount of a voltage it is going to generate? So that answer we will get in this today's session. See, uh, we already know about the uh, Faraday's equation. Faraday has already defined it as EMF generated by any circuit is equal to minus n d phi or we can write it like a del phi by del t. Now here in this particular equation, del phi is nothing but total number of flux and del t is nothing but time required to cut that, cut that particular flux and that's why these two entire term together stands for rate of change of flux. This entire term stands for rate of change of flux. Here n is nothing but number of conductors. n is nothing but number of conductor. So as number of conductor or number of turns of the conductor increases, EMF increases. Whereas this minus sign is taken or borrowed from Lenz law. Lenz had defined that uh, uh, the uh, generator or whatever amount of EMF is generated, EMF always opposes cause of its generation. G whatever may be the reason, it opposes that particular reason of generation. That is nothing but a Lenz law. So Lenz law had integrated this minus sign over here. Now in this particular equation, if I know del phi means total flux, I can I calculate? Yes, very simple. Phi, let's say in my equation, phi is nothing but flux per pole and P is nothing but number of pole. Let's say uh, then total P into phi, how, what is this will be? This will be equal to total flux. So total flux, how much is the total flux generated in a circuit? P is nothing but number of pole and phi is nothing but number of flux per pole. Means how much amount of a pole, uh, flux is generated by each individual pole and number of pole into that will get us a total number of flux. Chalo, we got an first entity. Let's put it in this particular equation. So that is nothing but P phi. I have substituted this del phi over here. Now, second case is how much amount of a time it takes to cut entire flux. To, to cut entire flux, how much amount of a time it takes. Now see, if n is the speed of our machine. Now, please don't get confused between this n and this n. That's why I am writing this as a n1 to avoid a confusion. So, n is nothing but to no, speed of our uh, rotating machine and that particular speed is in a r rpm rpm stand for revolution per minute so uh, if i uh, divide this particular n by 60 then i will get revolution per second right so i get a revolution per second and if i take a invert of it that is 60 by n that is nothing but how much amount of a uh, or we can say distance it travel in one second right and that is nothing but time because unit of this is a time or second and that is how we got a second entity that is nothing but a del t so how much is a del t del t is equal to 60 by n so put it in our equation so this divided by 60 into uh, divided by n 60 by n so that is how we completed this entity this entity now only possible or remaining entity is number of conductor that is nothing but n1 n1 is nothing but number of conductor now say for example if i have z number of armature conductor how many conductor i have in a in my armature i have a z number of conductor so z is equal to n1 but no not like that because there are two type of armature winding either wave winding or lap winding in case of a wave winding parallel path are nothing but a two so z is divided by 2 or rather we can call it as a z divided by a because a is nothing but number of parallel path so number of parallel path in case of a wave winding are 2 and number of parallel path in case of a lap winding is p so that is why either it is divided by 2 or divided by p based on what type of a winding it is so this is nothing but a n1 now let's put this particular entity over here so this become an z divided by a so simplification it will be something like e is equal to, okay i am ignoring this minus sign because this is because of lane's law and it says ki it is opposite the cause of its generation we understood it so that's why no problem at all so z is equal to uh, z n p phi divided by 60 a p phi n z divided by 60 a so this is the amount of a voltage that our generator is gonna generate so that is how we have derived an equation of a emf so this much amount of a emf will be generated by our dc generator so first problem we have completed first point was emf equation now 
try to understand what happens in case of a motor try to understand what happens in case of motor motor is a circuit which convert an electrical energy into mechanical energy so here it is opposite it is not generating a emf rather we are applying an emf and it is getting converted into mechanical power but there comes a simple problem in that case also there is an field winding and there is an armature winding right and whenever that armature winding start rotating inside a field winding that armature winding is going to cut a field winding uh, flux so in simple term we can say that even if motor is supposed to convert an electrical energy into mechanical but as there is a cutting of the flux associated so that's why some amount of a emf or voltage will be generated inside a armature of a motor also some amount of a voltage will be generated inside a armature of a motor also that is nothing but rotor of the motor also so the, how much amount of emf is generated equation is exactly same only what we did rather than writing it like eg we are writing it like eb eb is nothing but a back emf so back emf is nothing but a amount of emf generated back in an rotor of a motor eb is nothing but back emf that is nothing but amount of emf generated inside a rotor or armature of a motor only we changed it we replaced the eg with the ab so this is an back emf so now we understood the concept of back emf why it is generated and then we can proceed to draw our equivalent circuit now see this is our equivalent circuit now see this is an official symbol of an armature winding we have one circle rotating and uh, representing a rotating part and we have these boxes on both the side uh, those two boxes represent the brushes of our armature these two boxes represent brushes of armature so this is an symbol of an armature and eb represent an back emf generated positive side negative side indicate that this particular will be positive emf side and this will be negative and this is an equivalent electrical circuit so this is an equivalent electrical circuit so now equivalent electrical circuit consists of three component one is very obvious eb eb represent the back emf generated then second is ra so armature is an coil so that coil had some resistance even if it is made up of a copper but copper is not a superconductor that is some resistance is associated with copper and that is ra so that is shown over here don't forget that in last session we discussed about a uh, losses and that is nothing but i a square ra this is amount of a loss takes place inside a armature so this is about an losses so this ra represent a losses factor along with that there is one more loss known as a vb vb we call it as a brush losses see what are those brush losses when your brush comes in contact with our commutator so there is a spark happening over there as well as those brushes are made up with a graphite material graphite is a good conductor but not a best conductor of electricity and that's why there are some losses associated with the brushes brushes are not uh, loss free so for, for example ideally that is up to 1 to 2 volt loss takes place across a brushes so those losses are being shown as a vb vb is nothing but a brush loss r is nothing but a armature winding resistance and eb is nothing but back emf so if, if i apply a kvl across this particular i will get this as v applied voltage v this is an applied voltage v is equal to eb that is back emf plus iara means voltage drop across this ra resistor plus vb so this is known as a uh, equation of a voltage or equation of back emf in terms of voltages so this is about an equivalent circuit of armature so this is an equivalent circuit of armature now similarly someone may ask a question what is an equivalent circuit of a field winding as there are no brushes associated with it so there is no brush loss there is no emf generated in it because it act as a magnet don't forget that our field winding act as a magnet whereas our armature winding act as an conductor so that's why there are uh, uh, back emf generated inside a conductor not inside a magnet we cannot generate a voltage inside a magnet so that is the reason inside a field there is no back emf associated so there is only one loss associated with the field winding and that is nothing but rf that is nothing but resistance of a field winding that's why losses will be i f square into rf so this is the amount of loss takes place in case of a field winding so field winding this much amount of a loss will take place so this is about an equivalent circuit so equivalent circuit will be something like this 
RF is the only component. So coil is equivalent to RF, whereas this is the equivalent circuit of a the armature or rotor of DC machine. So we discussed about equivalent circuit of armature, equivalent circuit of a field winding and concept of back EMF. We derived the equation of back EMF. We derived the equation of voltage in term of EB or other equation of EB in terms of voltages, right? So this is, uh, uh, that's it for today. Uh, in next session, we'll discuss about few more concepts related to DC machine. Till then, please be safe and enjoy this session. Thank you.